Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation and people leave in the comment section sometimes a request for a particular topic and I send it up stream and we see if we can do it and this one is requested. It is what is the meaning of unconditional love? It's a great question. It's probably requested because at the Marriage Foundation we talk about unconditional love because and you know we will be starting up a course for tmf counselors and when i used to do it live we don't talk about problems and issues and unravel things and we do talk about communication of course and and good marital behavior but really what we're talking about are the purposes for marriage because when you know and remember why you got married then those purposes become the pole star in your, let's call it marriage therapy if you want, but to resurrect your marriage. And it almost doesn't matter where you're starting. We're so miseducated in the Western world, in the Eastern world too, about marriage, that people really have completely forgotten that we get married, number one, to be happy, and number two, to experience unconditional love. So someone said, well, what is unconditional love? Paul, would you talk about it? And hopefully you'll become a subscriber if you're not already and like this video and all of that. So what is the meaning of unconditional love? Well, <laughs> I've been meditating for many, many years and to seek God, to know God. And my prayer has been for forever from the beginning, Lord, teach me to love as thou dost love. And if you think about how much you are loved by God, I mean, it's the mind cannot handle it, right? Because anytime you ask God for something, I mean, obviously he's not, you know, your pawn shop. You don't go ask him for a Cadillac. But whenever you ask him for guidance, for help, especially for love, you receive it. And that love is mind bending. The mind cannot handle it. And the reason why is because the mind is material. Now stay with me because it's very important to understand this because your marriage depends on you doing certain things in order to experience the benefits that you're supposed to get from marriage. Unconditional love is what we all crave because we are souls. We have a mind, we have a body, but you're essentially a soul. I'm essentially a soul. And the soul is love itself. Now, if you look up love, because the world is really screwed up right now, it will tell you it's an emotion. It is not an emotion. It's way beyond an emotion. An emotion is just a software component of the mind. It's not just an increased like. You could love your new car. You could love your new dress. But we're not talking about that, are we? So the experience that you have had of love, the two that I like to point out to is one, when you got married and you were exchanging your vows or when you've gone to a wedding and there's that moment where you're just overwhelmed. You're overwhelmed and the mind isn't going, oh, this must be love. No, the mind doesn't like love. It doesn't. So the mind is going, oh, think about this. Think about that. So it's usually just a few seconds at best of this amazing feeling. Or if you're with your spouse and you take a look at her or him when they're asleep and your heart just opens, that's love, isn't it? That's the real experience of the soul. Now, you got married in order to experience love. You got married to be happy. And if you're running your marriage properly, you will be happy. It's like a mechanical process. It's like if you get into a really cool airplane, 
but you don't know how to fly it and somehow you manage to get it off the ground, you're going to die. And that's what happens to most people when they get married. They don't understand marriage. So when I first started doing this, because I used to be a divorce mediator. Those of you who are subscribers have heard this story. If you're not, you should become one so you can learn more about marriage. But I had a couple ask me to help them save their marriage instead of end it. And man, did I learn a lot about marriage. And one of the main things that we do at the Marriage Foundation that's so critical is we teach those who come to us for help and we have lots of help. We have books and we have courses and we have these videos and we have articles is we try to teach you about marriage, how it works. And very important part is how you work, how your spouse works, the combination of body, mind and soul. So you know what you're dealing with, but what you crave, what you want, what you have to have, what you deserve, what you should have. You have free will. Why shouldn't you have anything you want is unconditional love. They also call it marital love. And that is because marriage is this really special venue. There is no peer for marriage. Marriage is a spiritual path. You literally can find God through marriage by cultivating love. What is involved in that is getting past the mind, learning how to master the mind. It's part of our courses. It's the first part of the course is learning how to master the mind, taming it. So you are coming from the heart. When you come from the heart, it takes effort. It's not an instantaneous thing. It's logical, it's reasonable, it's practical, but it's not instantaneous because we're governed by our habits until we start mastering the mind. But then what happens is we start experiencing that love. So the other thing, the other times that we experience unconditional love automatically is when we watch our kids sleep. You know, you're not there watching your kids sleep and they're saying in their sleep, oh, mommy, oh, daddy, I love you. That's not what's happening. Your heart opens up. Isn't it so? And you experience this love that it cannot be described. And it's not conditioned upon them telling you they love you or them doing something to win your favor. It's unconditional. It's based on you actually, literally being you, you the soul. Do you see? Because you the soul you're a, you're a chip off the old block. You're part of God. God's love is unconditional. You could be the worst sinner. And I know some people are going to, oh no, you know, there's people who rot in hell forever. I don't believe that. God created us. God loves us. This is not a religious sermon. But God created us. He knows what he's doing. He gave us free will, but he knows what we're going to do. He knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows we're going to screw things up. But his love for us is constant. It's not conditioned by how we behave. You see? So we need to learn how to love our spouse unconditionally. And that is one of the two purposes of marriage, is to learn to love your spouse unconditionally. It's so beautiful. When you start really looking at marriage objectively, you're blown away by it, by how beautiful it is, what a great gift it is, what the benefits can be. Here you are, you know, in this world, most people want to eat you for lunch. They don't care about you. They're not interested in your success. They don't care if you fail. They are happy almost, it seems, when you're going through a lot of problems and they tell you, oh, you poor thing, blah, 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 gives them a chance to relate to you. But they're not really there for you. But when you get married, you're supposed to be there for your spouse. And by doing that, by completely opening your heart to your spouse, it's a safe place. 
and you learn to love unconditionally and your life changes. It just gets better and better and better. What we preach here at the Marriage Foundation is strive for, expect ever-increasing happiness and ever-expanding love. It is reasonable. Most people will tell you it's not. Trust me, when I was a divorce mediator and people were coming to me, they were coming from uh, couples counseling and therapy, and it doesn't work because all they're doing is focusing on problems. Focus on love. Focus on good behavior. Focus on nurturing your love for your spouse in your behavior, in your thoughts, in your deeds. That's it. Okay, I hope you're a subscriber. If not, subscribe. Like the video, leave a comment if you want. And again, this one is requested. If you have something you'd like to hear me talk about, go ahead and let us know and we'll see what we can do. God bless you and take care. Thanks for joining me.